Hi, it's Steve here. I want to just share with you something that is very close to my heart and something you've probably already experienced, but uh, talking about how to avoid getting caught by spam malware, especially when it arrives on your phone. We've all been there. We know the situation. You have a phone message, an SMS message showing up that says something like, your bank account has been frozen, or you've missed a delivery, or you are in trouble with the IRS, the tax authorities, because you owe them money, or maybe they owe you a refund. But either way, you get this message that says, hey, there's something going on that is directly important to you, usually around money or personal safety. And what do you do? Well, a lot of people will click on that link because it's something urgent and something they've got to deal with right away. Maybe you are smarter than that. You have been through this before, and you know not to press on this link. But unfortunately, a lot of people do. And it is the cause of so much problem, not just simply for an individual on their own phone, but the fact that their phone and their email and all their other data that can be pulled from this accident uh, can lead to their companies, their employers, and become a source of other larger scale cyber crime as well. So it isn't just simply an individual crime. But even that is enough, right? You click on this link and either follow it because you are caught up in the moment. Oh my goodness, something bad's going on. Or you may want to simply click on it to say, don't do this again. Unsubscribe me from this list. But that also doesn't work because anytime you click on this link, you are telling the bad people who send it that your connection, your number is a live connection, and it will be resold even further across the dark web because it is live, it is valuable. Now, these things, we see them all the time because the best, the best tool for cyber criminals, the best thing they can possibly use to get what they need done is you, us, me, all of us. Human beings are prone to make mistakes because that's how we are. We look at something and it looks urgent. We click on it because, yeah, we don't think in a period of urgency in that very moment, that candid moment. So a lot of companies and organizations have spent millions, billions of dollars building up their fortress to make it almost impenetrable, which is great. But the weak link is always the humans, us. So this is the problem we're facing is getting caught on these little things, these little messages, whether they show up on your phone or even as an inbox email on whatever system you have. It can be something just like this. Uh, it doesn't matter what the company is, whether it's a real company or a made up company, the subject line is something that says, hey, this is uh, your account has been suspended. There's problems, there's trouble. And here's what you got to do with a link. And most people won't look at this too closely. This is a sample that I just simply took offline off the internet. But I mean, if you look at the from line here, uh, the company is SunTrust, but the domain it's coming from is not spelled the same way. It is SunTust, something that people will overlook in that moment of urgency. The account also, the link uh, is not going to be going to the direct real company. It's going to go somewhere else. And most people don't ever stop to look at that kind of stuff. It becomes the classic way of fooling people. Everything else about this looks legitimate, so you click on it and just do what they say. Now, this is playing on human fear. People are terrified of making a mistake. They're terrified of losing their job if they make a mistake that affects the company, or even if it's just simply personal, just losing their money, uh, losing their, their privacy, whatever it is, or they get that message saying, hi, it's your granddaughter or grandson or nephew I'm traveling in Paris and I'm stuck in jail and I need some bail money. I need your help. And the immediate fear is I've got to take care of this person, obviously. And we just jump into those things all the time. That is the problem. Sometimes you can recognize some things in these emails or these messages that points out the fact this is a scam. Usually no personalization, nothing that shows that they know who you are. No first name, no last name, no specific account numbers, because that stuff is unique to you. Sometimes they'll try and fool you by telling you that your credit card, starting with these first four digits, is uh, frozen. Well, you know, that's nothing because every credit card belonging to any particular brand, Visa, MasterCard, whatever, has the same four digits. That's how they brand themselves. So that's one that people f get fooled by. Poor spelling, poor use of language uh, and of grammar uh, is always uh, a good trip up because most of the people who send these things don't have the time, the patience, or the need 
to improve their spelling and grammar, knowing again that most people who read it are going to look past that and just simply react to the urgency. And that is the bottom line here, is that these messages send a great urgency, forcing you to click right away without thinking, and uh, that's where the problems happen. So what I want to share with you is the one thing that I'm hoping you will take away, not only for yourself, but to teach others, especially those such as your trusting parents um, who may have come from another generation where trust was a normal thing. Whenever you receive a message that has this kind of urgency message, the most important thing to do is to gap it. What I mean by gap it is to put a gap between what you are doing, what you are seeing, and what you do next. So instead of clicking on the link to try and resolve this problem, you put a gap there. You go to the way you would normally do things. If it is your bank, if it is PayPal, if it is Federal Express, if it is the tax authorities, the IRS, or whatever country's tax authorities you are dealing with, Go to them online the way you usually do, from your own main computer, using your regular login the way you normally would. Because believe me, if there's a problem, it'll be on file. So whether you log on or call their number directly, not from the link on the message on your phone, but the way you normally would, you put a gap, a space between this urgent message and what you do next. Gap it. I see this all the time. I work with cybersecurity people all the time. And this is the problem, is that nobody has the time to stop and do this. So if they get a message, even for an invoice uh, that the company hasn't paid, they'll simply click on that link to resolve it, rather than go the other route, hang up on this, delete this message or put it aside, and call or contact your supplier to ask them directly. They'll know. They'll know if there's a problem. But this is the, the one word, if you put a hyphen in or a two-word mantra, that I hope that everybody can take hold of. And remember, in that moment of urgency, when you see a message that's going to affect you, gap it. Put in a gap, put it aside, and go and handle this separately the way you normally would. Log in, call somebody the way you normally would, not the link or the phone number on that message. This is the kind of stuff that takes advantage of people. It's a terrible shame, and it's so easy to fix just by teaching this street smarting technique to gap it and move away from the stimulus and respond separately. Never, by the way, as I've already mentioned, click on the link to ask to be unsubscribed from any email because as I said, it simply reveals you as being a live contact and your phone number or email address suddenly goes up in value tenfold or a hundredfold and will be resold all over the dark web as a live contact. So there's no point in ever trying to reason with these people. All you're doing is putting yourself into harm's way once again. I just repeat this right now. Gap it. Teach everybody you know to gap it. These are the kind of things that I teach uh, in my books, in my podcasts, and in my consulting. Um, you can check it out and have more or learn more about this and other kinds of situations that we get caught up on if you want to in my new book, which is called The Future of Workplace Fear, How Human Reflex, there you go, Human Reflex, stands in the way of digital transformation and therefore progress. Um, even if you don't want to buy the book, check out the podcast. StevePrentice.com has the link to the podcast Cool Time Life, and the episodes on here are evergreen. They're not, they don't evaporate or expire at the end of the week. They are to uh, concepts and techniques you can use to survive and thrive in this fast-paced digital life we're in. Uh, the podcast page at steveprentice.com will list all the past podcasts, um, which have, again, topics that are still relevant and useful today. So I invite you to check these things out and to, again, learn as you go every single day, micro-learning how to survive and thrive in this world we are in. And finally, if you have any questions about further episodes of our YouTube series here, please send them to me. Again, there's a contact form at steveprentice.com. Let me know what you're interested in, and we'll set that up as the next episode of the Cool Time Life video series. So take care. Be careful. You deserve to live a life unhassled by the criminal elements, and you can do so by learning how to gap it. Look forward to hearing from you and talking to you again soon. Thanks a lot.